Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Aspect and how it relates to air-to-air -air missiles. Now keep in mind that Aspect has other things we can worry about, but for today we're just going to be looking at air-to-air -air missiles. Let's get started. So first things first, we have ourselves our favorite little F-16 Block 52 Falcon, and uh, we're going to go ahead and crack it open real quick. And you're probably going to notice that it has a rather unique loadout here. Uh, you'll see it's got some AIM 9Xs, but it also has a silly loadout called Generic RPG, which is just sort of my fun way of loading things into something that doesn't necessarily supposed to carry it. And you're going to notice we're carrying some AIM 9Bs. Now, the AIM 9B is an old school Sidewinder missile. This is back when they called things like the GAR 9 and stuff like that. Apparently, this thing is the sophistication of a washing machine electrically. There's not really a lot going on in it. So, the one thing we want to take a look at, though, is if we scroll through all these little useful details, so we're going to spot a couple neat details. The first one we're going to see is that we have an IR seeker on board. It is single spectral IR, air search, altitude info. Good to know. The other thing we're going to notice if we scroll down a little bit is it says anti-air stern chase. So what that means is this weapon has to see a very, very hot source and basically run after it, which in my opinion is the worst combination of uh, where you want to see. So let, let's try this out. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause here. I'm going to order my hefty, hefty handy little F-16 to go ahead and flip us around here. We have uh, nothing less than a B-52 just sort of hanging out. And what we're going to do is we're going to get my handy dandy F-16, line up with the B-52, and we're going to try to go ahead and pop it right from the front here. So I'm going to line ourselves up. We've confirmed the target. Let's go ahead and press that lovely F-1 key. Click on him. He's uh, closing up. He should be building up a little bit of energy, which he is. Everything's looking pretty clean. Everybody's getting ready for the fun part where we're going to let loose that missile. Sneaking up, we'll speed up time just a tiny bit here. Getting into range, getting into range. Here we go. Nothing. You're probably saying, well, why is our F-16 not firing? That's because when you have an air rear stern chase missile, you can only launch at the stern of the target. So if I actually grab my F-16, bring him over here, spin him around here, let's go ahead and pop him around real quickly, and then order him to go ahead and engage our target, what's going to happen is he'll be able to go ahead and launch. But one of the challenges you're going to face with a weapon like this is that you have to close extremely close to the target to actually launch the weapon. And the reason being is because when the weapon launches, it's going to burn its motor out very, very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and pause for a second and take a look at our scenario. You can see we have automatic fire are ready to fire i'll go ahead and pop all four because it's probably about as many as it's going to take the weapons fire they immediately begin their stern chase uh, not oh we got one hit here comes the next one and we got two hits okay let's go ahead and release that last one Oop, a little too close there let's back up and here comes the next one i'm actually amazed i hit that many <laughs> seems unlikely Oh, that one didn't do anything. And we fired the last one, and we splattered that B-52. But notice that we could only engage the B-52 when we were behind it, and that our weapon had to chase after them. So let's go ahead and recreate our scenario here, and we'll go ahead and take a look at a different style weapon. So that was our classic rear aspect missile. So obviously, technology improved, and we have what they call an all-aspect weapon. In this particular case, we're dealing with the AIM-9M. So let's go ahead and open up the weapons real quick, pop down to generic RPG. If I click on this, you'll see a couple things have changed. First of all, visually, the weapon's a little bit different. So a little bit. By the way, these roller rounds on the back, brilliant. But if we uh, come down here, you'll notice that we now have a dual spectral IR technology. So we're using multiple parts of the IR spectrum, which also makes it more flare resistant. And the other thing you probably notice is it is anti-air all aspect, which means the seeker is sensitive enough that it can spot a target in any direction just because of the heating of the surface of the target. So let's go ahead and uh, fire things back up here. I'll go ahead and order him to go ahead and spin this way. Well, in just a few moments, of course, we'll acquire a lucky B-52 here. Poor guy. You know, he's just doing his thing, and we spot him, we press the F1 one key, actually I'll press shift F1, go ahead and click on it, and we'll go ahead and pop in all four of our AIM 9s here. It's not going to take that many. Notice we get ourselves into range pretty much right away. I'll go ahead and spin ourselves to the right. We're going to wait until we have a little bit better shot where you can't just turn around and run, and we're going to go ahead and start firing immediately. Now notice the weapon leaves the rail, it burns for about a second, and then it immediately starts losing energy. However, but since we are a doing a front-on attack here, this B-52 is not going to be left with a heck of a lot of options as far as dodging goes. So wham, 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 wham. <laughs> now a couple of you are probably going, um... Why does it take so many Sidewinders to kill a B-52? Well, it takes that many Sidewinders to kill a B-52 because of the size of B-52. 
So then the last type of aspect, and this isn't less of an aspect question, but one of the things you got to remember about these old seekers is that their field of view is actually very, very tiny. Uh, something they added later on was actually the ability to have a very wide field of view, which brought us into one last kind of aspect. And uh, that is what they call extremely wide. Well, so if I actually pop this one up a 12 real fast, scroll down, you're going to see that we are carrying this lovely, lovely little missile here called the AA-12. This is, I'm sorry, the AA-1 Archer. This is an R-73. Now, if I open this up and scroll down, there's a couple things you're going to notice. First of all, we have the same dual spectral, which makes it more resistant to flares. But if you take a look at the arc of this particular sensor, it is gigantic. So this thing can basically see anything in front of the aircraft in a massive 180 degree arc. You also notice if we come down here with properties that we have dogfight high off bore sight, meaning we can fire this weapon out of our shoulder. So you're saying, wait, what? So there's a reason why I named this particular aircraft Little Hacks. So let me show you what I mean. So we'll go ahead and spin around. We have ourselves my friendly little B-52 here. <laughs> it's not that friendly. Poor guy's about to get shot about six times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how this works. So we're going to come around. Uh, normally, of course, we'd use our adders here. The adders, the, like I said, the AA-12, I keep forgetting here. I'm just going to confirm the fact that I'm not carrying any of those. Good. But notice my archer has a massive range as far as weapon goes. And I'm intentionally going to take my aircraft here. I'm going to put him so he's uh, like an angle like this. There we go. Actually, I'm going to pull him to the side. And finish your turn. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and put him right here. And we'll go even a little bit more ridiculous. There we go. We'll do something like that. So now we have our situation where aircraft is at an extremely bizarrely weird angle here. But because the weapon has such a large field of view, the pilot can actually use a helmet-mounted sight to look and tell the seeker where to look to. So in this case, we're looking at a B-52. So I'll lock into my guy real quickly, and you'll notice that in three seconds, I'll be able to go ahead and engage him. I'll go ahead and pause. Now watch what this weapon does when it leaves the rail. It's going to go normally, and it's just going to take a left. <laughs> That's amazing. Let's go ahead and uh, look at this one in 3D because it is just so amusing to watch. It just, it looks like it shouldn't be a thing. All right, let's go look at our handy dandy MiG-35 there. You can already see how ridiculously oblique that missile is that just left the rail there. Now watch, here comes the next one. Whoopsie daisy. So those are called high offs. Um, I'm like, let me get this correct here. I'm having a heck of a time of my vocabulary. Oh, let's see here, R-73. This is called a high off bore sight. I was going to be right. But as you can see, this weapon basically launched sideways and it's able to engage any aspect of the target. You can see it's basically chasing our B-52 down right now. Come on. Uh, the B-52 apparently had enough time to start accelerating, getting out of the way. And unfortunately, uh, we were not successful in that particular engagement. Uh, so what we can do, of course, is we can spin around and go get him with some cannon. Now, there's a reason why I picked the B-52 here. And that was one of the points of this uh, video here was actually because the B-52, if you actually click on it real fast, let's see, is this the version that I'm thinking it's going to be? Mm, let me take a look. Indeed it is. There's a reason why in the old days they used to mount tail guns on B-52s as well as Tupolev 95s and Tupolev 16s. And that's because all those missiles of the era were tail chasing weapons. So what would happen is you'd run into this sort of a situation where I'm chasing this guy down, got to sneak up to him, we're going to go ahead and hit him with our gun. And what you would do is you basically fly right into the line of sight of the tail gunner. And since you had to chase after him in order to get a weapon to fire, you'd basically get shot back at from the guy in the rear. So let's go ahead and unpause for a second here. Grab this guy. I'm going to go ahead and say F1 and click on him. And he's uh, just going to go to time. Oh, actually, I probably shouldn't press F1. That was a bad idea. But what I will do is I'll order him to uh, fire all of them. <laughs> this poor guy's about to get a bit of a surprise when he gets into shooting range here. All right, getting a little closer, getting ready for attack. Looks pretty good. Going to go ahead. <laughs> As you could see, uh, there was a reason why they used to do that. But of course, uh, once you developed the all aspect weapon, you just didn't need to do an attack like that on a target like this unless something else had come up, of course, meaning that you, they basically eliminated all of them. As a matter of fact, if I go up in here real quick and type in B-52, and we'll do an H model here, um, pretty much any, grab this one real quick, you'll notice they eliminated that tail gun because they realized it's not going to matter anymore. Enjoy.